Are you ready? All right. Well, if you missed out uh, two weeks ago, I really brought a prophetic declaration for where I felt God was going to lead us as a church. And uh, I'm going to recap very quickly for you. Um, and it was really a prophetic declaration from Malachi 3, chapter, 10, uh, chapter 3, verse 10. And it says this. This is God speaking. And we know that because it says, says the Lord Almighty. All right. So, so I know it's God speaking. It says, test me in this says the Lord Almighty. Are you ready for it? And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations, everyone say all the nations. All, nations. all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. I don't know, I was so excited about this word. And I, I, um, I start going, I'm becoming a black preacher all of a sudden. You know, and I'm like, come on, church, come on, you're not getting it, you're not getting it, you're not responding as good as I'm preaching. I'm going to preach to this guy, come on. And, and that's what was happening in my spirit, it was jumping and doing cartwheels because I was getting a revelation. You see, I, I, I preach this so many times, but there's something about when the Holy Spirit breathes on His Word and it starts to jump and come a lot. And I'm thinking, no, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. I'm going to go somewhere where someone's going to get it. And so I was preaching. And you know, I just want you to know, 2016, the Lord declares it as the year of uncontained favor. Come on, if you want to give him a hand of praise and say amen. It's the year of uncontained favor. And I love it because the Lord does not lie and he is not a sanguine like me that exaggerates. How's your day? Oh, the best day ever. How's your day? The worst day ever. That can be me. But when the Lord says, I'm going to pour out so much blessing, you cannot contain it. Guess what? No exaggeration. He's not trying to hype you up. He's not trying to encourage you. No, no, no. He's declaring and commanding the truth. This can be the year of uncontained favor and blessing. God's desire this year is to reveal His true nature as Jehovah Jireh, your provider. God wants to bless His people and reveal His nature um, as one who loves you. And if you're struggling with this, I've got some scriptures for you um, in, uh, in the next slide, please. Um, uh, and that you need to meditate and write down and study beautiful scriptures that will help you get this revelation into your life. Because I've met too many Christians that are under deception, and I'm not saying that meanly, I'm saying that truthfully. They actually believe that poverty is godliness. That the poorer you are, the closer you are to God's heart. Can I tell you, your wallet does not determine how close you are to God. Your bank account does not determine whether you're rich or you're poor. That does not determine your intimacy with God. In fact, if prosperity and blessing was evil, then Abraham, the father of faith, would be the biggest of sinners. Because the Bible says the Lord blessed him. Isaac, the son of promise, would be a big sinner because the Lord blessed him. David, a man after God's own heart, would be a sinner because the Lord blessed him. Lazarus, Jesus' closest friend, would be a big sinner because the Lord had blessed him and he was prosperous. Joseph of Arimathea, if you put that into your iPad, it will come out as Joseph as aromatherapy. Uh, I know this because every time I put that in, I'm going, how do you spell aromatherapy? So Joseph, the sweet spelling man, 
in the tomb, uh, not tomb, who bought the tomb for Jesus. He was a rich man, but the Lord blessed him. Can I tell you, it's time to change our revelation. God wants to bless His people. God wants to prosper His people. And more than that, next slide, um, when God blesses, He blesses abundantly. Alright, He blesses abundantly. And here are some scriptures for that, to, to just show you that God doesn't just give you just enough. I'm sorry. That is also deception. Lord, all I want is enough for me and my wife and my family. Can I tell you that is so, so selfish? Do you honestly think the creator of all the world is just going to bless you enough for you and your family? No, no, no. He blessed and said you'll be a blessing to nations. God doesn't want to just bless us for us. He wants to bless us for nation's sake. Here's the third thing we, we talked through, uh, and that God's blessing is not limited to finance. Okay? But includes provision, protection, and guidance. Financial, physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. Men. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, come on. I shall not lack anything. He provides for every area. Don't cheapen it to make it about finance. Okay? Because you can have all the money in the world and have no peace in your heart. Amen? But He wants to bless in every single area. Number four, the blessing of God, are you ready? Is conditional. Salvation is not conditional. Salvation is a free gift. You do not have to do anything to earn it. Jesus did it all. You receive it by faith. But the blessing of the Lord actually is conditional. Just as, as a father, I bless my children according to their behavior. I may have some blessings for them, but if their behavior is bad, you know what? No, you're not going to go out and be with your friends today. You're going to be doing some lines or whatever it is the punishment is. Again, because fathers know how to discipline their children. They're still my child. I still love them. But blessings are conditional. What is blessing conditional on? It's conditional on obedience. It's conditional on stewardship. God's looking to see how you steward what He's already given you. And finally, it's conditional on expectancy. Okay? And um, I challenged you at the end, didn't I? gave you homework. I don't know if you've done it, but it's January 10th and you should be 10 days into your miracle journal by now. And I encouraged you all that, listen, the Bible says, test me in this. So you're supposed to test God. Now, not in an arrogant way, but He actually encourages you to step out in faith and go and test Him on this particular instance and ask Him to bless you as He said He would. And so we began to write down as a family in my house all the supernatural blessings that we have received in the last 10 days. Um, I'm so encouraged to hear other people have done this and our staff are, are doing this as well. But you know, for Sharon and I, we had a fire close to our home the yesterday or day before yesterday. And uh, we're standing there and Pastor Matt and I were praying against the fire. Winds turn on itself in Jesus' name. And, and uh, by the grace of God, we were saved. And uh, uh, we also have, um, you know, my health recovery is going so well. And I'm just so grateful for that. This week, I got to start full-time work back at the church, doing what I love doing. And so my heart is full. But also, above that, are our finances, supernaturally, through four miracle sources that is above our salary, has really just gone through the roof in 10 days. When I say miracle sources, it's like Sharon cleaned out the storeroom and in one of the drawers we found a hundred dollars. Now, we don't do that in our house. We don't find you know, that sort of stuff. But, but literally, um, our income in 10 days has been three weeks worth of salary. Now, I'm not saying this to brag. Some of you are going, oh, yeah, he's bragging. No, no, I'm not. Because you don't need to know the amount. The sources came from all different... I'm just testifying 
that if you take God at His word, He is good. He wants to bless. And we need to test Him. You know, and if I didn't have those miracles, there's still so many things I would be grateful for. But you know what? I'm going to believe for miracles this year. Amen? So today I want to go on to a second part of that initial sermon. And my title is The Purpose Behind Prosperity. The Purpose Behind Prosperity. It's important to know why God is blessing you. It's important to know why God is blessed. Of course, He loves you. Absolutely. But there's more than that. God loves you is true. But there is a deeper purpose. Apart from blessing you, He has a purpose behind the blessing. And this is, He wants to empower us to fulfill our mission on earth. Did you know that you have a mission on earth? You actually have a God. If you ever wondered, why am I on earth? Well, Jesus actually made it very clear for us in Matthew 28, verse 19. He says, this is why you're on earth. This is what I want you to do with your life. Are you ready, Christian? All believers, he says this, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. This, Hey, listen, it's not about your career. It's not about your talent. It's not about the size or the quality of your house. It's not about the holidays. Why are you actually on earth? Why are you still breathing? Let me tell you why. So that you can go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We have a mission. The mission is win the world. Slightly large, Jesus. Slightly impossible, God. Slightly requiring of supernatural help. Amen? Alright? It's impossible for us to be light in darkness without a supernatural God. It's impossible for us to stand up for injustice in, in, in this chaotic world without a supernatural God. But this is what you and I need to know. He didn't just set the bar there, go and transform the world, go and win the world. He also then went on to say, I am going to equip you and I am going to empower you and I am going to resource you to fulfill the mission that I called you to. It's not just call and leave it. It's not just dumping. He's coming and He's delegated it to us, but He's then going to resource you and I to do the work. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we see this scripture and, and, and God says, but you will receive power. Jesus says, uh, uh, Paul, uh, Luke says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Oh, great. He goes, go into all the world. And then he goes. And Jesus, no, 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 it's not like that. I haven't abandoned you. I'm going to empower you. And I'm going to come upon you in Holy Spirit power. And I'll tell you why I'm giving you this power. Because you're going to use this power to fulfill the mandate of going into all the world. You're going to be my witnesses when the power comes upon you. Do you know it takes supernatural finance to do all that God has called us to do? But can I tell you, He's not just telling us to go into the world and change that using fire. He is going to supernaturally provide you with the finance to release, to bring about transformation. Have you ever said to yourself, if I had a couple of million dollars, I would build some orphanages, I would save the orphan, I would save the widow, I would... Pay for missionaries to go. If I had a couple of million dollars, man, I tell you, I'd be a powerful force for God. Here's the revelation I got. God is pouring out millions. And He's pouring out into my lap. But just a little bit slower than I thought. <laughs> and you know what? What we can do is what He's given us to use for the empowerment of the gospel. I'm consuming and so I need to challenge myself about the increase because there's a purpose behind the prosperity. There's actually a reason and that is to fulfill, fulfill 
the mission. You see, we either go or we send. See, right now, I can't go to uh, Langford where they, um, they're counselling women who find themselves pregnant and without support um, to save their babies and, and, and work with them so that they can actually have their babies instead of abort. I, I can't be there. I'm here with you. I can't be there. I can't go there and help them that way. But do you know what? I have already sent. Yeah. I've already sent. So in a way, I, I can't go, but I've sent finance. Yeah. And it's doing the job for me. Yeah. Not in my place. But it's actually an extension of me. I, I can't right now be uh, at, at the uh, Indigenous Kimberley area where church is happening and, and hundreds are coming to Christ. And literally there's a revival breaking out in our Indigenous people and churches are being planted, people are being healed and, and people are getting dry supernaturally, miraculously from alcohol abuse. I can't be there right now because I'm here with you. I can't go, but I have sent. And I'm actually doing something there right now, would you believe? How do I do that? Men can do two things at once. Do you know what I'm saying? You can go, you can send, but fulfill the mission of God for your life. Fulfill the mandate that He has placed in your life. If you don't know the purpose behind your prosperity, my friend, you will consume it all. When I was 15, I shared this story before, my first job was a birthday party clown. And I shared with you, uh, black people should not be wearing white makeup. It's very scary. And I, instead of being a funny clown, people would go, ah! these kids would actually be scared. But that was my first job. And I earned a whopping $15 a week being the birthday party clown of the now defunct Leaming Recreation Center. And uh, I remember when I got that money, uh, I, my whole lifestyle consisted around $15 a week. And then I went to uni and I worked part-time and my salary went from $15 to $200. And I remember that first paycheck thinking, I am Donald Trump. <laughs> Maybe that's a bad example. I am a rich person. <laughs> I'm never going to need money again. I have so much money from $15 to $200. I have money to save. I have money to spend. I, I, I will never need money again. I'll be honest with you. Within two months, my lifestyle, my consumption grew to a $200 a week budget. Isn't it funny how with humanity, whatever you get, you'll grow and consume. Pretty soon, $200 was not enough. Then I remember getting 500 when I went full time all those days, 500 bucks. Within a couple of months, your expenditure is consuming of what you've received. If you don't know why God has blessed you, if you don't understand the purpose behind your prosperity, you will consume all that God has given you when really it wasn't meant completely for your consumption. You see, people get upset when we talk about prosperity because they're thinking we're encouraging people to be materialistic. Wrong! There is a purpose behind why God is blessing you so that the nations will be blessed through you, so that the gospel will be preached through you, that the poor will be helped through you, that injustice will be corrected through you, that the orphan and the widow will be rescued through you, that the refugee and the alien, as the Bible calls it, will be saved through you. You have a mandate. You have a mission with me. Go into all the world and make disciples. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 says this, And God is able to bless you abundantly. How many say amen? amen? God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, oh I love this, in all times, having all that you need, you will outbound. In every good work. That's what we learned last week, right? There's another verse after that. So here's what it says in verse 10. It says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower. Who's he? We're talking about God. He's the one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. Will also supply and increase your store of seed 
and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that, if you're underlining your scriptures, so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, through Paul's ministry, to the spreading of the gospel to the Gentiles, through us, Paul says, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Three very quick things from this passage. Number one, God wants to bless us. Amen. But let's not leave it there. There's more to it. He wants to bless us. Why? The purpose is so that it will develop prosperity, a heart of generous generosity in us. The prosperity is supposed to teach us generosity. The, pros- the blessing is supposed to be outworked. The, it, the, the, the flow on effect is supposed to be generosity. See, if you have been blessed and you are not more generous, then you haven't understood the purpose behind your prosperity. And Paul says, hey, listen, more than that, when you are generous by partnering with the gospel, with partnering with us, the fruit is, the result is, people will give thanksgiving to God. The lost who don't know Christ, they give thanksgiving to God. As the musician, musicians, please come up and help me. Um, you know, I sat at Christmas breakfast again in front of this lady, and I think I've shared this with you, that no family, and, and miraculously, these strangers walked past and came and sat, and she goes, oh, we grew up together. And a few minutes later, another family walked past, she goes, oh, come and sit. And within the end of the Christmas breakfast, this woman who was sitting all by herself was now surrounded by not literal family, but extended family. And so she was so moved, and she goes, this, this is God, isn't it? This is God? She goes, I was so depressed, I was so alone, I don't have real family here, my family don't want to see me. But now, I'm surrounded. Oh, there was another part, I don't know, she said, oh, I'm from New Zealand, my husband was from New Zealand, and, and he had committed suicide 17 years ago. And, and I said, oh, my wife's in New Zealand too. She goes, oh, my husband was from Thangarai. And I said, my wife's from Thangarai. She burst into tears. And she goes, this is God, isn't it? I came here by myself. And now I'm surrounded by family. And you, your wife, she's even part of my family. This is God. And you partner with the gospel. Your generosity will result in people giving thanksgiving to God. You see, if you consume it yourself, no one gets to find God. Do you know what I'm saying? But if you realize that now God's blessed me for a purpose, it's beyond me. This is now He who supplies seed to the sower, if I can have this last illustration. Now He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and it will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness you will be enriched in every way the Bible says that in every single increase that the Lord gives you there's two portions seed and bread and this really jumped out at me seed and bread I'm Indian so I have lots of rice. I don't have seed, but I have lots of rice. I just want you to imagine that there's 10 cups of rice in here. The Bible says the Lord prospers us so that we can become generous. Okay? But in every increase from the Lord, there's seed and there's bread. Now some of us mistake and say, well, the seeds, the tithe. No, 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 no. You can't be generous with the tithe. How can you not what you mean? I'm being generous, I've given God much. No, no, no. The tithe belongs to the Lord. You can't be generous with something that already belongs to God. If I borrow Pastor Peter's jacket, and then the next day I decide to give it back to him, firstly, I will stop being a thief. But secondly, I can't go and say, hey, I've got your gift. Go on. It's, I'm being generous. I'm getting you what belongs to you. Of course, that's, that's not right, is it? So we know 
Now, from every increase, the tithe, the tenth, goes to the Lord. But what's left in that increase is not just bread. It's seed and bread. I'll be honest with you, when we saw this increase, I mean, Sharon and I, we have a list. Our house is, is relatively new, and we still haven't got a back garden in regards to the side. We have no reticulation. We need pavers. We need a number of things. So literally, that whole increase had an, an object next to it that had to be purchased. You know what I mean? Within minutes. Within minutes. In fact, we could have used it all times two and, and still not had enough. Okay? But I felt the Lord challenge me going, no, 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 no. Some of that is meant to be seed. Don't you consume, oh, if I had a million dollars, no, no, I'm pouring it out. Just slowly. Use the seed. And the Bible doesn't tell us how much needs to be seen. That is, it's not written in the Bible. That's up to you. In 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 9, verse 6, it says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. But it doesn't tell you how much. So I'm not here to tell you how much you should give to missions to the poor to, to use out of that increase. But the Bible does say each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give and not reluctantly or under compulsion. I'm not telling you we are so poor and we're so in need to help refugees. You know what? That is compulsion giving. We don't do that here. We don't do that here. This is between you and God. Of all the increase He has blessed you with, are you making it all bread? Or are you going, God, this is your provision for me to fulfill the mandate, isn't it? You blessed me to bless the nations. And this morning as we come around our missions giving, my prayer is that you would have a revelation simple as that. That God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you abundantly. But He wants to bless you for the purpose of the kingdom. Let's not get so caught up on our kingdom. Let's get lost in His kingdom. May thousands, multitudes and nations, may every tribe and every tongue Give thanksgiving to God because of the blessing that He has poured into your life.